Okay, now we've got the uh, headstock out of the way. We're um, going to be looking at doing the saddle. We're going to build it on the bench up until the apron stage because I can lift the whole thing up, put it onto the lathe, and then just attach the apron at the front. So we'll build it here, make sure everything works, see what needs to be changed, what needs to be repaired and then we'll take it from there. First thing you'll see that I've done, this is really the only repair that I have done, is these brass strips. In here it sits against the, the bedways and you can see the, the wear marks in here. Now it's worn, over the years it's worn down by about a quarter of a mil, maybe a third of a mil. So I've used the, the brass strips as a bit of an experiment to lift that back up. It shouldn't in theory matter, but what happens is the, the rack and pinion underneath the lathe for the, the handle, it falls away from that and you end up with a bigger gap. So what happens is the, the handle will turn, I think from memory, about a third of a turn before it actually engages with the gear. So look at it mathematically, that's about a quarter of an inch play in that hand wheel. So if I lift it back up with a bit of brass, I can reduce that, that play in the hand wheel. As I say, it's only an experiment, it's brass, at best it should be bronze, and it should be the full width of that wear mark. I'll try it out, I'll see what happens. If it seems to be okay, I'll get some brass and I'll re redo all that properly. For now, that'll do it. Let's build it. First things first, we need to get our cross slide on. So what we need is these two bolts. the lead screw which is left hand that's not a problem what the problem is this should be a half inch 10 acme thread what it actually is is a left handed Whitworth because it's 12 threads per inch compared to what it should have been is 10 threads per inch this dial which is marked in 100 graduations actually reads wrong when you set it because because our thread pitch is wrong so that'll need to be replaced at some stage but I can't do it now because I don't have a lathe
Yeah, just got to remember which one goes where. All loose at the moment. Put the key in. Put the handle on. So if memory serves, there was a spring washer and this cap. That feels pretty good so far. So we'll put the gib Uh, we'll put a bit of oil in it.
oil in the hole here. That'll need a lot of uh, fiddling around once it's on the lathe to get the gib right. Alright, next step. Yeah, cross slide on. Just a little bit of oil on that. For some reason it doesn't want to go on. Ah, that's because these need to go in a certain way. So he's got one one side is rounded. Actually they're both rounded, so it has to go in the proper way. The other one. That one was correct. All right, let's try it now. That's better. Alright, super smooth. Get our uh, bronze block back in. Shouldn't be too hard. The rest of our bits, again, I need to remember how to put it all together. So put a key in there, put our handle on there, a cap screw in there.
Actually feels pretty good. Doesn't really feel like there's a lot of movement. Pretty good, I'm pretty happy with that. Bottom of the top slide rubs on that nut on the top of the bolt there. May have always done that, I've never never turned it fully around. That's it for that little one can actually uh, go on the machine. Alright, so it's a new day. We've got the saddle on the bed. We need to uh, put a retaining plate in the back here. Put the gib, a couple of nuts and bolts and various bits and pieces. Then we'll put the apron on adjust all the handle and uh, set that up. Now you recall that we've lifted the saddle and one of the reasons is for this uh, rack and pinion because the pinion drops away from the rack by a quarter of a mil what happens is I get too much play in that so in effect I've lifted that up try and reduce that play a little bit We've also got another reason around the back here. There's a retainer plate fits on under here and pushes up against this side of the, uh, the bed. So when I use the, uh, the locking screw fixed in from the top here, it actually squeezes the plate and the saddle onto the bed because I've lifted that back up a bit. What was happening before is I would adjust the, I try and lock the saddle in position, but this was still too loose and I could still just move it backwards and forwards. So that's another reason why I lifted that up with brass. You can also see the wear marks on the retaining plate. Gib, the gib screws. So we'll just get a few drops of oil in there. Back here, a little at the front. That's fairly smooth. So we'll call that good for now, and we'll uh, have a work on the uh, the apron. The retainer plate goes on here. a bit of oil in the half nuts, a little oil in the pinion gear and then we'll get this bolted in.
For now, that should be enough. Okay, that's fairly smooth. So you can see how much play I have in that handle now because I've lifted it up before it would go from so from there to right down here so now I've got very little play well that feels pretty good engage the half nut and it's doing what the half nut should be doing So I think that should be uh, should be pretty good for now. So we can uh, call the saddle done, but we'll need to tighten up bolts. We need to adjust the gibs at the back. We need to adjust all these gibs, but I'm not going to do anything about it now because we've still got a lot of setting up to do. Good enough for me. Alright, we're also going to uh, pull this chuck apart, give it a clean up. I've had it apart a couple of years ago, uh, cleaned it out then. I don't expect to find much gunk in here, but who knows. It's only a three jaw. There's a internal jaws I also have the, uh, the external jaws uh, they're not a reversible jaw so you have to actually pull those out and change it for these set so let's pull out these bolts and see what happens Alright, hmm, maybe I haven't had this apart, I think I might have just had the backing plate off. Alright, let's see. Got two screws, I've also got a, uh, a pin or something there. Just looking at this, I'm going to say, it's really hard to say, I reckon there's a front and a back half of this. So, I get a dolly, I'll try to break it. Well, not break it, but. Yeah, look at that. There's a line. You can see I've opened that up. Moment of truth. That's in really good condition. So we've got a washer here.
Yeah, there's a little bit of swarf in there. It's not very... It's not too badly worn. But let's clean it out. Get a bit of grease in there. Now normally I'd use oil for lathes. But in this case I'm going to use a bit of grease. Let's wash it out. Grease in there. So I'll use some uh, Castrol Grease LM Multi Purpose. It's good enough as any. Okay. The grease around there. As I say, normally for lathes I'll be using um, oil. But because this is a, uh, a closed system, virtually, uh, I'm going to use grease instead Feels really good. Two, that one there. Do nicely. One chuck, and I'm actually quite proud that I still have the original label on it. <laughs> 